Hello creeps! Andy here and this week, or by the time you're seeing this, it will officially be fall. I believe fall starts on the 22nd? The 23rd, which is approximately Saturday. So since it is the week leading up to fall, uh, I found some pumpkin spice murder books <laughs> online and I thought, well, I gotta read these to get into the mood for the changing of the season for the greatest time of year because Halloween is upon us and I am so excited for, uh, you know, the upcoming spooky season. And you would probably think there probably can't be that many pumpkin spice murder mysteries, but you would be wrong because I found enough to read a book a week, no, a book a day for this week uh, of pumpkin spice murder books. So. I'm just gonna introduce them to you. I think this vlog will be a little bit of everything. We'll have a little bit of a reading vlog and maybe we'll we'll do some some like fall stuff this week too. I, I don't exactly, I don't have anything planned, okay? But uh, we'll, we're just gonna go with flow. But I'm very excited to introduce these books. So the first one I have is Pumpkin Spice Sacrifice. I'm a sucker for a rhyming book. And this is by Addison Moore, Murder in the Mix. These are my first, I think, ever cozy mysteries. I never really knew what people meant when they said cozy mysteries, and I think these are the type of books that they're talking about. So I am very excited, and they're all, yeah, surrounding pumpkin spice. I'll read the back of them before I read each book, but let me just introduce them all to you. And then I have Pumpkin Spice and Haunted Twice, and this one is by Jeffrey Shields. I'm so excited for these. And then one of them comes tomorrow. And then I bought two on Kindle ebook thing. And the ones that I bought were Pumpkin Spice and a Body on Ice. It's a Dixie Cup Diner Mysteries and it's by Willow Monroe. And then the last one that I bought was The Great Pumpkin Spice Slaughter. And this is by Marco Manone. Those are the five pumpkin spice murder books that I will be reading over the next week. I hope that you guys will join me. I'm very excited also to read these comfy murder mystery books because I finished Come With Me by Ronald Malfi last night at like five in the morning and just sobbed. <laughs> for like 30 minutes. So I'm glad that I'm getting some just relaxed, fun kind of books. Not that that one wasn't fun. It dealt with a lot of heavy stuff. So I'm excited to just jump in to some of these. First up on our list here, we are going to read Pumpkin Spice and a Body on Ice. So let's get started with that. I think what I'll do is I'll read them and then the next day I'll give you kind of an overview on re what I read. Let's read the description for this one. Okay, but they also have others in this series called Peppermint Breath and An Untimely Death and Raisin Bread and Somebody's Dead. And I think I need to read all of them. These names are just hilarious. Okay, Starla Cup lives her life on purpose, and it shows. She owns the best diner in Virginia, has the best friends in the world, and she's the reigning cupcake queen of Sugar Hill's annual dessert festival, which is only a couple of weeks away. Life is pretty darn good until she finds Natalie Crump, her arch nemesis, dead on the railroad tracks behind the diner. Now she's famous for something besides her cupcakes, and everyone's pretty sure that did I say Natalie? It's definitely Nadine. Nadine's death was no accident, with the sexy new police chief breathing down her neck and the possible killer among her close group of friends. Starla has to figure out what happened to prove herself innocent and win a cupcake contest before the real killer gets away with the murder. I think it's so funny that someone's dead and she's like, I got to solve a murder and I still have to compete in this cupcake competition. Oh, this is amazing. I'm very excited for this. Let's get started. <laughs> what? Okay, so Starla has a best friend named Poppy. Poppy is dating Tom. However, there's another woman named Nadine that follows Todd Tom around all the time and is seems rather stalkerish and kind of obsessed with him. There's also rumors that he might be having an affair behind an affair behind Poppy's back. And so Nadine ends up dead. Starla finds her dead and Poppy was out that that morning and she came back pretty shaken up. And so, you know, she could be the murderer, but she claims to have seen Tom with Poppy 
on a bridge where supposedly her body had fell onto the ra railroad tracks below. So it could be Tom as well or someone else. But then so this other character came and she said that she was folding clothes in her laundry room off the garage and she heard someone in the garage and then all of her underwear were missing. So I'm not really sure how that fits into the plot quite yet, but let's keep reading. Okay, so last night I finished Pumpkin Spice and A Body on Ice and I wanted to give, tell you like what I liked and what I didn't like about this book. So first off, I really liked at the beginning of each chapter, there was a little teacup there. Not much else happened after what I told you yesterday. There was a cupcake competition, someone gets murdered, and someone was stealing underwear. And that's pretty much what happens in the book. They're trying to figure out who the murderer was. And unfortunately for Starla, I mean, don't you hate it when somebody gets murdered and it just totally throws off your plans to bake cupcakes? I know, me too. Anyways, well, one, it was it was a cute story, you know, it was fine. The underwear thing was a little weird. Um, and I think that it was just a way to try to identify who the killer was because she reaches into a pocket and pulls out underwear and goes, oh, underwear, and then knows that that person is the killer. Listen, I'm not the one who wrote this, but anyways, what I didn't like about it was it's called Pumpkin Spice and a Body on Ice, right? So you're like, okay, the at the very least we know she's gonna enter a pumpkin spice cupcake into this cupcake competition but she doesn't she enters a sweet potato cupcake into the competition something like that not pumpkin spice and so um that really irritated me because it's called pumpkin spice and and it, there should have been pumpkin spice more present in this book so yeah a, a little bit um thrown off by that otherwise it was fine after the book she gives you starla's pumpkin spice cupcakes recipe and i feel like i should try it out let's see here what she puts Tang. Do you guys remember Tang from the 90s? Tang circulated through my veins in the 90s and she puts Tang powdered drink mix in her pumpkin spice cupcakes. That is weird. Wow, these might be really something. We'll try out Starless pumpkin spice cupcake recipe and see if you should put Tang inside of your cupcakes. Welcome to my kitchen. This is my favorite part of my house. This sign right here. It says, this last lobotomy. This is the recipe. Oh. We have flour, rolled oats, pumpkin spices, tang mix, dark brown sugar, but my husband got light brown sugar, eggs, pumpkin puree, vegetable oil and applesauce, milk, vanilla extract, honey, and walnut pieces, which I absolutely refuse to put in cupcakes. Okay, it didn't rise, but I think that's our fault for using gluten-free flour. Well, you bought me every step of the way to put yeast there. And your yeast did so much! It made them so full! supposed to put more! It looks disgusting. It smells pretty good. But also, she didn't tell us where to put the tang in. Tastes like baby food. Does it? It smells kind of like baby food, too. Oh, also, another gripe that I have with this lady is these are cupcakes. There's no fucking frosting. How is this a cupcake? Yeah, muffins. They're muffins. And shitty ones well, like that. Hockey pucks. <laughs> that is not good. Ew! I'm suing that lady. Next up, we're reading Pumpkin Spice Sacrifice. So let me read you the back of this one and then we'll jump into it. It says, my name is Lottie Lemon and I see dead pets. On occasion, I see once upon a human too. I see a once upon a human too, like a ghost, I think. And unfortunately for me, that horrible scenario is playing out right this minute. Worse yet, that good looking ghost just so happens to look just like my friend Everett and it refuses to leave his side. I'm petrified of losing Everett so much so that I refuse to leave his side, which doesn't exactly bode well with my newly minted boyfriend, Noah Fox, who is just as comely as his surname suggests. After two horrific murders just took place in the small town of Honey Hollow, I'm ready to put the last few months behind me, but when I come across another gruesome discovery, my entire world comes crashing down on me once again. She has the supernatural ability to see dead pets, which are also har har 
harbingers. What does this word mean? Harbinger. Harbinger. A person who goes ahead and makes known the approach of another. Eh? Anything that foreshadows a future event. Wait, I'm having a That's So Raven moment, but instead of seeing the future, I'm seeing the past. Wasn't this a video game? Oh my god, this was a video game! I remember this! Oh man, if my brother is watching, he better text me and tell me that he remembers this game because it was his game that I was playing. It, oh, it was called Steel Harbinger. This is what the cover looks like. Do you guys have any clue what this is? She was like in half alien. It was like aliens were coming to take over the planet and she was a half alien woman. I think she maybe she got attacked by one or something. Man, these graphics suck. And then she was on a mission to try to take over the aliens. This game was hard. Wow. I totally forgot this existed. Memory unlocked. Wait, I just got another memory of another game that I used to play on the same console. I don't know what it was. Yeah, this is going to sound like I'm high, but it was like a paper dog and his paper onion karate teacher. Dog and onion video game. Parappa the Rappa. Did anybody play this game? I just unlocked so many memories from the 90s from these books. So uh, thanks, Lottie Lemon. Anyways, living in the small town of, Hol of Honey Hollow can be murder. So my only hope for this is that there's more pumpkin spice in here. So let's get to reading. One other thing is I'm a little disappointed because I was going to um, have a third book because I didn't want all of my books to just be ebooks. But the problem, my friends, is that I was supposed to start that book like tonight or tomorrow and I got a message from Amazon it was supposed to be delivered today and it says that this order is running late so I think I might end up just downloading another ebook and I actually found one pumpkin spice and a deadly heist and deadly heist let's get into pumpkin spice and sacrifice Okay, already off to a good start. They go to this banquet where this girl is receiving an award. Lottie Lemon has provided all of the pumpkin spice treats for this event, and the girl drinks her pumpkin spice latte, goes up to receive her award, award grabs her throat and said, poison, and then drops dead. And then this woman picks up the glass, sniffs it and says, there's murder in this cup. <laughs> So already more pumpkin spice than the last one. I'm happy about that. I am going to take a quick break from reading and um, I will see you either tonight or tomorrow and we'll go over this. Welcome back to this cloudy Los Angeles day. So last night I finished Pumpkin Spice Sacrifice by Addison Moore and I gotta tell ya, this book was so so cute it was adorable at first i was reading it i was like oh this is something i would have loved when i was younger like if i were in junior high reading this i would have loved it and then things got a little bit adult there were some like strip clubs in there and some naked classes and i was like all right maybe maybe not junior high but uh anyways i thought that this was so cute so yeah it was just about lottie lemon there's a murder that takes place somebody uh, spiked a pumpkin spice latte and a young woman was murdered in cold blood and so Lottie Lemon has to try to figure out who did it because it was her pumpkin sp spice latte like she's the one that made it she had to clear her name and clear her friends names and things like that so very cute a little bit of everything some romance some supernatural stuff some adventure and also there was a pie baking competition where she did make a pumpkin pie because of you know it's obviously it's called pumpkin spice sacrifice it's really weird because the one i read before pumpkin spice and a body on ice they had these two have a lot in common they both take place in vermont the lead person is a baker they were both entering a competition there was murder involved oh and they both were dating police officers so i don't know i thought that that was kind of interesting and i'm curious if all every one of these books takes place in Vermont we shall see but anyways super cute really enjoyed this and honestly I think I'm gonna buy the next one in the series just because I'm interested in where this goes and it was kind of left on a cliffhanger so I'm I'm curious Lottie Lemon what happens next for you but yeah it was well written it was cute it was fun I had a blast with that one 
but today I have to film, edit, and upload a video. I know I waited a little bit too late, so most of the day is going to be spent on that. But today I'm going to be reading Pumpkin Spice and Haunted Twice. This is by Jeffrey Shields. It says, a haunting hotel and a missing briefcase. What could possibly go wrong? It's almost Halloween. That's funny because this one had a missing briefcase in it too. It's almost Halloween and former chef turned private investigator Guy and his partner in crime solving, Sylvia, go to the Ghost Inn to experience a haunted attraction. But when a briefcase mysteriously disappears, the two of them are enlisted to find it in the eerie hotel. It seems simple enough, but when footsteps are heard in unoccupied rooms, lights flicker and switch off, and enthusiastic ghost hunters attempt a seance and ghost hunt, things turn from simple to plain old spooky. I'm gonna film that video edit and then I'll see you a little bit later. Hello, welcome back. I didn't film anything yesterday, but I did read another book. So let me give you the recap for the last two books and then we'll get into the last book I saved the best for last. I'm most excited about this one. There's another recipe in this guy, and then we'll try them, we'll rank the books. We might have a little uh, something else at the end. We'll see, we'll see where it goes. So first I read this one. This one was so silly. It's like slapstick silly. Like I was reading a Three Stooges book. It's about these two people that go to stay in a haunted attraction in. The guy that works there loses a briefcase so they're like well let us stay here for free and we'll help you find the briefcase and supposedly what's inside is the deed to the hotel so the guy really wants it and he says um, okay fine you can stay and they keep finding the briefcase but instead of just grabbing it they're they're like okay I remember it's in the hallway and they go tell the guy and then by the time they come up it keeps disappearing it's just the silliest book however I did like the incorporation of pumpkin spice in it I thought it was kind of cute He's a detective, but also a chef. So instead of referring to clues as clues, he refers to them as ingredients. And so he's making a pumpkin spice latte. So his first ingredient is like a cup and then milk and he's trying to find the pumpkin. So I thought that that was pretty cute way of incorporating pumpkin spice. And at least there was pumpkin spice in here. Otherwise it was a little too silly for me, but there is a recipe for a pumpkin spice latte at the end. So we're gonna give that a try and see how that is. We're going to make this guy's pumpkin spice latte recipe. Have you tried Tang since the 90s? Uh -huh. I feel like we need to try this. It says it's okay. Whoa. <laughs> too much Tang? No, it's just not good. Try it. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Is this too hot for me? Uh, probably. I'll just take a spoon of it. Well, it kind of tastes like pumpkin. Honestly, I, I would make that. Okay, well, that was all right. The next book I read was Pumpkin Spice and a Deadly Heist by Tanya Taylor, I think. There's a little thing in the way, but I think it's Tanya Taylor. And this one was weird. <laughs> it's about a person who works at a law firm. A guy comes in and says, there's these people that robbed a bank and they're trying to blame me and I wasn't there. So she wants to make sure that he wasn't there. So she ends up being a undercover sleuth and just destroying and stealing evidence, trying to prove that this guy was there and lying to people and just doing horrible things. She ends up finding out that he was in fact part of it. Oh, and the only pumpkin spice, by the way, by the way, in this entire book was when they went to the location of the people who robbed the bank, their little meetup location, there was an empty box that used to have a pumpkin pie in it. That's the only pumpkin that was in this entire book. Why are you calling it pumpkin heist? pumpkin spice and a deadly heist if there's no pumpkin spice in it. Anyways, it ends very weird. I apologize for ruining the ending in case you needed to read this, but you gotta hear the ending. Basically, she has these two neighbors and they're sweet and a little old couple. So she finds the robber, she finds the money, everything's solved, and then her neighbor kills her husband and herself. And that's how the book ends. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> so it obviously goes on to another series, but I mean, a book has to be 
whole in itself instead of a part of the series where like nothing ends you know what i mean it just felt unfinished so uh yeah that was that one but i have saved the best one for last i am most excited for the great pumpkin sweat oh shit the Great Pumpkin Spice Slaughter. This is by Marco Manone, and if that name might sound familiar to you if you've watched my channel for a while, because he also wrote The Haunting of Nicolas Cage. This was just like a fun little novella. I read this before, and so um, I'll leave all these books linked in my description as I always do in case you guys want to pick them up. But like, look at the cover. It's so cute and fun. And then this little intro right here, it's from the former chairman and CEO of Starbucks. And there's like a little coffee ring, but it's bloody. I mean, it's just the little details like that. So anyways, I'm going to read this one. I have a feeling it's going to be fun. We'll rank them. We'll do all the fun stuff. Instead of you watching me read, I'm just going to, I'll see you when it's over. Okay, it's ranking time. In last place comes Pumpkin Spice and a Deadly Heist. It wasn't a full story, and so that was a bummer. The next place would be Pumpkin Spice and, ha and Haunted Twice. It was just kind of silly and slapsticky, and yeah, just silly. Um, so wasn't my favorite read. Next up, we have Pumpkin Spice and a Body on Ice. This one I thought would be lower because there was no pumpkin spice in it, but it was actually a cute story. It was a full cohesive story, and yeah, I rather enjoyed it. The next one is The Great Pumpkin Spice Slaughter. This one was a lot of fun, and it was the only horror book in the mix, and it's about pumpkin spice making people, specifically white women, lose their minds. Pretty funny, and yeah, I really enjoyed that one. And the winner, my friends, I am very surprised to say, is Pumpkin Spice Sacrifice. This book just reminded me of the books I read as a kid. It was like a little supernatural and baking and the main character was cute and all the characters were cute and it was a cute story. It was just so cute. I just really, really enjoyed this one. So much so that I already added the next one into my cart on Amazon, but I kind of want to go back and read the first two because this is the third in the series. But I also don't want to spend like hundreds of dollars on these books, but also there's 50 of them and I get very obsessive. So who knows, maybe I will read all of them. But this was, yeah, this was really cute. I really enjoyed that one. And I'm glad that I gave them a read because I would not have probably read that book besides doing this video and I really enjoyed it. So yeah, that's my ranking. Yeah, and then and then the end. This Halloween, shut every window. Lock every door and find out what happens when pumpkin spice isn't so nice. Pumpkin spice will kill you twice. Once with the price and the second with the slice. Uh, you didn't even do it yet? No. You're, um, you're ruining the scene. <laughs> do it. Building a scene. <laughs> Out of here. But this isn't a real movie. It is to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't know I was appearing to fucking Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> I got nightmares in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper 